Hello and welcome to what's new in Shopify connector, especially B2B and order editing functionality. I'm Andrei Panko and I will be doing demos for you together with my colleagues Joshua and Onat. So I will start uh, introducing the changes we did to make Shopify connector even better. And then we will talk about B2B from different perspective. And then also one of the uh, hot topics is uh, about uh, how to process order editing in both products in parallel, because this is actually not trivial. Before, now it's much easier. All right, uh, let me start by demonstrating you how Shopify connector actually works. All right, let's go to the Shopify shops. I already created shop up front because now not uh, much uh, magic here. And now I need to insert URL. So for people who were with uh, using Shopify connector from the moment it was launched, they know that it was dramatically easy in the past because you can just go, copy the URL and insert it back. Uh, it was not working for some time since uh, Shopify switched to a single Shopify admin URL, but now we actually uptake it and now it is very easy. So you can see that URL is automatically updated, so no need to magically uh, construct URL on the fly. Connector will do it for you. Then I will activate connector. Good. And we are connected. What else I would like to show you right here? Let's go to the list of locations and get the list of locations. We also noticed that uh, even if we provide extensibility, which allows you to have uh, multiple different uh, ways to calculate inventory, one was very popular. It's uh, inventory minus reservation. So like a lot of customers decided to build it uh, themselves. So we are also adding this functionality out of the box. So for new merchants, they don't need to build a PT. And for existing ones, you can actually remove this functionality and uh, switch to the standard behavior and it will should reduce the cost of maintenance for you. All right, now we have it configured very easily. Uh, before I will push uh, data to Shopify, I also would like to go to the list of the products and notice, notice the notification which actually helps you to understand about the next step. Of course, if you are an uh, experienced user of Shopify connector, you already know which buttons to press, but for new people, it's a good reminder what to use. And this is a dynamic one. So it can actually help you to, to decide about next step. If you need to push data to Shopify or import it from Shopify, then actions will be different. Okay, let me type in some, uh, some filters because I want to export everything in one go. All right, nice and easy. Quick look at the Shopify list of products. You can see all products with images, with uh, availability is here. So simple as usual. What we added here as well, I would like to mention it uh, before we move forward further to B2B part, I would like to also show you the new uh, setting which allows people to decide if they want to send shipment confirmation or not. Because some companies are using digital goods and uh, they don't want to send extra fulfillment details once the product is uh, shipped and fulfillment is registered in Business Central. So now up to you what you want to do next. All right, another one uh, makes sense to, uh, to notify about the change that we are by default importing uh, refunds and returns. So this is a minor change which you also might want to be aware. Now let's go and talk about B2B. And who is the best to tell about Shopify B2B is of course experts from Shopify. And now we will see presentation from Ben who will introduce B2B on Shopify, Shopify's premier wholesale solution. Thanks, Andre. As mentioned, my name is Ben Rajabi, and I'm the senior product lead for B2B on Shopify. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about our suite of powerful B2B features that you can now connect to Business Central. To set the stage, I want to give you a quick overview of what B2B on Shopify is. B2B on Shopify is a suite of powerful and flexible wholesale features built right into the core of our platform. This means that merchants can leverage the full power of Shopify for all sides of their business. 
This also means that B2B and Shopify is not a separate platform. It's not an app bolted onto the side of Shopify, and it's not acquired software. We built it right into the core. Now, as the experts in commerce, we've set out to revolutionize B2B in commerce, just as we have for D2C, with a brand forward approach and hyper focus on ease of use and ability to grow to any scale. So what makes B2B and Shopify different from other solutions in the market? Well, first, and perhaps most importantly, we offer a unified commerce experience. Merchants can run their entire business from a single platform or even a single store with access to all of Shopify's most powerful features. That includes themes, APIs, discounts, flow, functions, and more. This means less technical debt and higher return on investment. Plus, merchants don't need to hire developers to create and manage their B2B store. Anyone on their team can use our admin and feature set, no coding experience required. Second, with B2B and Shopify, merchants have full control over the buying experience. This includes two elements of customizations. Merchants can easily customize all of the wholesale information available to their buyers. This means they can tailor product availability, pricelets, payment terms, payment and shipping methods, and so much more on a per customer basis, all from the admin. They can also personalize store content and information based on the type of customer they're selling to, whether it's B2B or D2C or the market their customer is located in. And lastly, B2B and Shopify offer seamless integration to external systems to allow our merchants to operate with maximum efficiency out of the box integrations and our close ties to leading ERP partners like Microsoft demonstrates our determination to make it easy for merchants to run their business from one central platform. And with Microsoft Business Central's updated integrations, merchants can easily sync companies and catalogs data from Shopify to Business Central and vice versa for better data accuracy and order management. Since our initial launch of B2B on Shopify, we've released over four dozen features just for wholesale. The list that you're seeing on your screen is not an exhaustive list. In fact, no other platform has moved faster to meet the needs of B2B merchants over the past year. We're committed to driving the market forward by catering to the needs of wholesale merchants of any size while raising the bar for personalized B2B buying and self-serve experience. Shopify is all in on B2B, thanks. All right, uh, thank you, Ben, uh, for showing this. It's amazing. Let's see how actually uh, it works together with uh, Business Central. And uh, today, uh, here with me, we have Onat, who will show how it works uh, on Business Central side, and I will be the merchant or Shopify admin who will be demonstrating how it looks on Shopify side. Thank you, Andre. Um, I want to start first with a, uh, a little Im uh, improvement, a slight change that we did on D2C customer synchronization. Um, if you look at the settings, we have removed to export customers to Shopify Boolean, and instead we aligned this uh, with uh, the item sync. So if you want to push a D2C customer, then you can always go to customers. But now you'll see um, an add customer button, just like what Andre showed um, for items. Um, you can select one and then hit OK. And then Helen Ray is now uh, synchronized to Shopify. Let me check. OK, I opened the list of customers on Shopify side and I can see the customer. Yeah, exactly as it used to be, but now with more control. So we can decide exactly which customers we want to export to Shopify as customers. What about companies? OK, let's look at companies. So um, you can probably notice this B2B company synchronization settings on your shop card. If you have uh, a plan that you can use uh, business to business in Shopify, you'll see that uh, tab. And it looks very similar to customer synchronization. We wanted to keep it in sync. Um, but two uh, main settings here, you can see the default uh, contact permission. This uh, allows you to select the, uh, the default main contact uh, is created uh, with what permissions. So it can be no permissions, ordering only, or location admin. 
And we have also set a setting for auto creating catalog when you uh, create uh, customers as companies uh, in Shopify. Let's see how that works. Uh, I go to related and companies and just like D2C, I can add a company and I can select, for example, um, School of Fine Art, hit OK. And now let's check back with Shopify if that uh, company is created. All right, let me refresh the list of customers. And now I can see customer, Megan. And if I will open the customer card, I can notice the difference. Now I have additional fact box information, which shows that this customer is actually linked to the company. And you can see that Business Central added this customer to School of Fine Art. And also this uh, customer has some permissions to specific locations. All right, let's go to the list of companies. And I can see the company created here as well. And this customer has a company has a location and it has default customer. And if I will explore the contacts, so I can see that uh, Megan is a main contact and I can also add extra ones. All right, I can also see the catalog. So we created catalog by default. What uh, items this catalog has? So I will go to the list of products and I go to the catalogs and I can see the catalog with the same name as a customer. So does it mean that for each uh, customer which we export to, to Shopify, we will create a separate catalog which we will need to maintain? Uh, no, you don't have to do that. You can actually deselect also create catalog and just create uh, a catalog yourself in Shopify and assign it to all companies. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, let me try it. So I will create a catalog and I will I would like to include only specific products because we exported both tables and chairs. In this case, I will call it B2B and I will save it. Because we exported both tables and chairs, I will repeat, uh, but uh, for B2B customers, I would like only to, uh, to include uh, tables into the B2B catalog. Chairs are for D2C customers only. All right, include into the catalog. And now let's actually explore how it looks. I will go to the online store. It's a default layout and I can see a lot of products. Okay, it's because I'm uh, right now, I am private customer who have not uh, authorized yet. So I can actually click on this attend desk and buy it. Claudio Lawson, who surprisingly works very close to Microsoft Office in Lumbia. We will use a special test uh, credit card information. No tips right now. And let's, uh, let's uh, post it. So you remember that system asked for address, system asked for uh, payment details, and it uh, used the standard prices, and it show all catalog as well. All right, let's continue shopping. What if, what if this person is actually part of the company? Let's, uh, let's log in and let's use uh, this uh, account. So for B2B or for modern uh, authorization engines, Shopify doesn't require user to know like login and password. So user needs to only specify email and then they will get a six digit code to, to, uh, to login. Let me check inbox and I can see this uh, six digit code, which I will copy and insert. Okay, what will be the difference? Surprisingly, no difference. Why so? Because this specific user and this specific catalog are not yet attached to the company. So let me go to the Shopify admin company and show you how to replace uh, catalog and how to add extra user. In the Shopify admin, I will go to the customers group, then I will go to the companies. And here I will, first of all, add, add a customer. So now we have a new one with a 
with the email. We'll save it. Then we need to add a catalog. We'll go to locations and then we will change the catalogs. So I would like to remove the uh, standard catalog, this one, and I would like to add B2B. Save. Of course, if we will create customer without uh, default catalog, we can do it. Uh, we can do it differently. All right. Now I have a customer with uh, uh, attached to the to the company and also B2B catalog attached. Let's take a look at the user experience. So go to home and back to catalog. So first of all, you can see that list of product has changed. Now I have access to smaller number of products, but prices, prices are still the same. What can we do with prices? Yeah, um, let's switch back to Business Central and go to uh, catalogs. This is a new action. And now I can use get catalogs, uh, select a shop, and you can see that I already got the, um, the B2B catalog Andre just created for School of Fine Art Company. The other one that we haven't got because we only looked through the, um, the catalogs for available companies already synchronized with Business Central. So now let me maximize the screen and uh, edit some settings in order to sync prices. First, I'll enable the sync prices, then I'll define a, um, a discounts group, and then I'll allow line discounts. Uh, for this catalog. Then I can use the, um, the sync prices action to synchronize prices depending on the settings I have set for each catalog. Now let's uh, switch back to Shopify and see the prices if they're synced. All right. So I can definitely now see that prices with discounts. So you can see that original prices were reduced by some percentage. So now if I will place the order, I will add this table to the to the card and then view the card. Time to do checkout. And this is how checkout window looks for user who is linked to the company. So he is representative of the some company. So you can see the user and company name, also the list of available addresses. Company on Shopify side can have multiple addresses uh, and the user can might have access to one or many of those. It's uh, on the Shopify side. There are permissions to, to manage it. Then payments. Payments are actually not needed because we configured company to not require credit card, but actually to, to do payment outside of uh, Shopify checkout. And before I will uh, submit order, I can also enter the PO number. So this is also a special field for B2B checkout, and this information will be transferred to Business Central. So let me submit this order. All right, order is submitted. And now we will explore how it looks on uh, Business Central side. Okay, now let's synchronize orders and see how they look. If I go to related and orders, use action sync orders from Shopify, click OK. Okay, uh, now you can see I got two orders, uh, but the main difference is although they were bought by the same person, Claudia Lawson, one was actually assigned to uh, the person itself, the other one is assigned to the company. So one is a B2B, uh, the other one is a D2C uh, order. So now, uh, because Claudia Lawson made a mistake and bought it herself instead of by the company, I just want to cancel the D2C order. So I can open it and then with a new action, uh, cancel order, I can cancel it. Uh, notify the customer, the reason is customer themselves. Uh, refund and restock and click OK. Okay, the order has been cancelled successfully. Now handle the B2B order. If I open that one, because we uh, defined a payment term and the, uh, the customer will pay later, I've received the payment uh, in BC in that sense, and then now I can actually mark it as paid. And now the order has been marked as paid. Now let's switch back to Shopify and see how that status looks. All right, what do we see in the Shopify? Two orders and one is marked as cancelled because we don't want to ship it to a private person uh, because uh, this private person asked us to cancel order and refund. Instead, this person placed an order on behalf of the, co of the company. And you can see that now this uh, order is marked as paid. That's very good. All right, the fulfillment part will work as, uh, as usual. Uh, 
no surprises here. Uh, now let's uh, let's talk about different aspect. We saw that uh, how order was uh, edited in Business Central, which is new capability. Now let's explore a different pers uh, perspective. What uh, if order is uh, edited in the Shopify? for different reasons, for example, exchanges or others, and how it will be handled by Business Central. So what are we looking at? So right now, a buyer placing an order with two items, Athen Desk, and then Mobile Pedestal with a new special sign to remove. This is a, for us to better understand what is happening. Yeah, so it will be very easy for us to see what's happening later. All right, now I need to do checkout. Also, our favorite customer, uh, the same address as usual. Okay, shipping method, again, standard ones, no options. Test credit card and pay now. But right now, customer is not that important. The most important part is that this customer wanted two things and paid for two things. And later, this customer actually realized they did a mistake. Uh, they didn't want to have a Athens mobile pedestal. It doesn't fit the, the, the apartment, so they want to, to remove it. So they, they called the merchant and asked to, to change the order. Administrator will go to the Shopify admin, find the order, and you can see that this order is marked as paid. Uh, now it's time to do edit. There are two options how to do edits. You can do refund, and in this case, uh, item will be removed and money will be transferred back to the customer credit card, but uh, not that simple. So right now we want to do a little bit more complicated scenario, which is more common in the, in the situation where uh, point of sales is, uh, is involved, like when people want to actually replace something. So let's play with this scenario. I'm in the edit mode, I have two items, and I would like to remove one, guess which one. And now I want to add another one. Mm -hmm, very obvious one. So I want to replace table with chair. That's how I, how I, how I want. Uh, prices are different. Let's not send any spam notifications right now. And update the document. Here you can see that uh, now, because of the price difference between uh, products, we still need to do some refund. It's a smaller amount. So we will do this uh, 280. So let's do refund as a separate uh, transaction. And this is uh, exactly what we're going to, to refund. 280, 240 and 80, 80 crown. Let's not do any sense. Do you want to specify any reasons? Mm, not today. Refund. Okay, so what I did, I removed one item, added another, and uh, I actually refunded the delta. What will happen in Business Central? Joshua, yeah. welcome. Thank you. So yeah, let's see. Uh, so as you saw, Andre just created a very uh, complicated order, and let's see how we manage things after some edits. So when we are in the Shopify orders and we decide to synchronize our orders, You'll see this is the order that Andre just created for us. And if we open it, we will see some things. So it will just have the items that was originally here and the item to add. But it will also have two different refunds. So this is because Shopify tracks edits as uh, refunds, but only the one that, it's, that has an actual amount is the one that we want to track or to create a credit memo from. So let's go ahead and, well, first let's map this to an item. And yeah. So the checks are that uh, whenever we want to create credit memos before we just could create any uh, cre credit memo from every refund and now we uh, make sure that we have an actual amount and we can link the appropriate credit memo that matches the refund that we created on Shopify's site. Aha, uh -huh. amazing. So I actually 
added stuff, removed stuff, and in the order which you imported into the business central, we only have the items which has to be shipped. And, for, and we also created credit memo only for, for delta amount, which will need to return back to the customer. That's good. I saw that you actually created orders and credit memos already, but now, uh, because you imported them into the business central, but what if I will continue editing order? So like uh, I'm again in the same order, which was already slightly edited. I will continue my, uh, my exercises here. And I will remove another item. For example, I will remove this time Athen desk. All right. What will you say for this challenge? Okay, so it is problematic now because now the sale, sale order is a document in Business Central already. So, and we do not know the processes that each company may have. So we cannot assume a lot, but let's see. Let's just try to synchronize orders and see what happens. Okay, so when it tries to, it will now detect that it has some errors. So this will show whenever uh, an order has already been processed but uh, now an addition is received on lines or on something that impacts the amount. So how to resolve this? That is uh, up to the processes of the companies, but we pr provide now two uh, main actions in order to do this. One is synchronize order from Shopify and the other one is unlink process documents. In this case, the edit that Andre made was removing this Athens desk. So this happened after this order was paid, so we probably want to have a credit memo for this also. No? So, but we already had a sales order that had this Athens disk. Okay, let's say for the sake of it that th this time we will cancel the sales order, create a new one, and yeah, we will deal with this as a new process. Okay, so we delete the order. And now this is like this, no, but, but we can also unlink. Okay, so this is basically saying, forget what I had before, and I want to reprocess this again. And it will be processed as new, and it will just have the order line that we expect to have, and it will have the refunds that we expect also to have. Or, well, in this case, Andre removed one, so that's why here you say you see that there is just one with zero, but it he didn't trigger the refund, I believe. So yeah, that's why we cannot create a credit memo for this one, but for this one you can. So we're basically providing some building blocks so that you can, uh, yeah, get yourself out of these complex situations where there are edits on one side and then you process the order and so on. So and now you can have things in sync and correct them as you need with these two little actions. Yeah, I understand. The challenge is, uh, is a big one because uh, Shopify doesn't have much information about the warehouse handling of the created order. So it might be on different stage, even we already ship uh, in the car. So we cannot automatically modify the documents, but we can give users notification that something is not exactly right and uh, give tools to address the situation. And then it might be a recreation of sales document or it might be asking for a house employee to stop the processing and do some uh, adjustment on, on a later stage. But also uh, in cases where it's easy to deal with, for example, if document was not imported at all, we just magically prepare document uh, with uh, only important information and then user should not uh, do any extra, extra actions. I think this is a reasonable uh, approach. This uh, slide actually summarizes uh, summarize what Shopify allows us to do. So like for orders without payments, we can do edits. For orders which are already paid, you can do either edits and refund separately or actually refund altogether. And uh, in Business Central, we process it one way or another. Like either we will edit uh, the imported document or we will uh, create credit memo, which also can be created automatically. And if a document in Business Central, like order or credit memo was already created, then we will show the, the warning and notification. All right, 
So thank you for watching and uh, thank you for sharing feedback and for using the Shopify connector. Uh, we hope that you will enjoy the new functionality and we will we'll have like, even more customers uh, benefiting from, from this integration. You can always uh, reach out to Microsoft via different channels and share your questions or feedback or product suggestions. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you.